Hello everyone, Alex with BIMIRAP.com here. Um, today we're going to be learning how to create spaces in Revit MEP. Particularly, we're going to look into how to create a new space, how to assign a space type to a space, whether it's a conference room or it's a kitchen or it's a classroom, whatever you want. Uh, how to create new space types. So if you want to create a new space type for a mechanical room, for an electrical room, whatever is required. How to create a space schedule, very important so you can manage your, your spaces in an efficient way. Uh, you want to know how to delete spaces, we're going to learn that too. Um, how to name spaces to match the architect's rooms, very important. You're going to learn different methods here. Um, how to create and tag several spaces at once, very useful. How to use the space naming tool, the most powerful tool for matching the architect's rooms. Also, we're going to learn how to deal with space boundaries, uh, how to separate spaces because you don't always necessarily have to match the architect's rooms envelope. Um, space tags, how to display area, volume, or both. Um, space area and volume calculations, how to set up those computations so they actually show up in your tags. Um, and finally, we're going to look into how to assign space types efficiently. Guess what? You're going to be using schedules. So, see you in Revit. All right, so let's create some mechanical spaces. For that, we come here to the Analyze tab. We click here on Space, right? Notice that I have Turn On Tag on Placement. So it automatically places a tag, right? And it numbers the space depending on the order at which I'm creating them. Now, please note that whenever you click on the space, right you can go all the way down to energy analysis and here under space type you can assign which type of space this is based on ASHRAE 62.1 you know regarding sensible heat gain and light power density and all that good stuff you can also create new space types according to whatever you want to change uh, but for now, let's, uh, now one problem that we're encountering here is that we don't know what this space is, right? So there are a couple of ways around that and we'll go one by one on advantages and disadvantages. But for now, let's uh, create a space schedule, okay? It's always very useful. So for that, you come here to view, you go here, schedules, schedules and quantities, and we select spaces. We want to schedule building components. Let's keep new construction. And for this schedule, we're going to select the number the name let's also select the area let's add maybe the volume and of course the space type and maybe the zone for later use There we go. And now I'm going to window tile. And I want you to notice something. Um, you can place spaces individually, like I just did, or place them all at once. Um, one thing that is very important to note is that if you select the tag and you delete the tag, Revit is telling you that 
although you deleted the tag, the corresponding space still exists, right? So it's keeping it in a placeholder somewhere so that you can rename it whenever you want. Now, even if you click here and you delete it, the space still exists. See, it's, it's right here. So the best way to delete a space, the only way uh, to really delete a space is to come here to the schedule and just delete it from here. Once you delete it from here, it's deleted from the project. Even if the tag is here and the space is here, if you select this space here and you delete it from the schedule, it's gone from the project. So let's recreate our, our spaces again to talk about a few things. Notice that since it already created spaces one and two, now it's calling them three and four. So it kind of like keeps a memory of it. Um, now, one thing we should address right now is that a spaces should have the name of the room, right? So back to how we address this back in the old days one option was to go to visibility graphics go to the Revit links and here and instead of by host view have the the display by linked view and then you would select a view in the architectural model that had the room tags then you would click ok and then you have all the room names in the background. Huge disadvantage of, of this method, you cannot move the room names because the room names are part of the architectural model. And second big disadvantage is that you would have to come here manually and type just to match that manually and that's obviously not not efficient so a very clever way around this was to get your space tag and edit that family so that your label instead of being space name you would remove the space name out of here and you would take the room name put it there instead and instead of your space number, you will remove that and get your room number instead. So if you were to do that and you load it into the project and override the existing version and its parameters, then now all your spaces, well, right now you're just doing one of them, but if you were to create another space, It immediately automatically takes the room name and number so now that you have this uh, it would be a better option to have this by host view right and have your background pretty clean so we can we can delete several spaces at once right now let's go back to our floor plan view and let's tag all those spaces uh, at once. Let's create them all. So you can do place spaces automatically. And then it gives you the message that the 34 spaces have been created automatically. So this was really nice, but then your column that has the space name doesn't have what you want. So you would have to come to your schedule and then come here to fields, remove that name. And then instead of that, go here to room and then add the room name. And then that would take the name of the room name. So instead of that, Revit has come a long way now and you just click on space, place, spaces automatically and then you notice that your spaces are all anarchically um, named but now you have this space naming tool 
on which you can simply say that you want names and numbers to be matched to the architectural room names and numbers. And then just by clicking OK, we have everything looking good, not only here, but also here. Notice that spaces have an upper limit and a limit offset. So that would be the, the top of this space would be referenced to level one at an offset of eight feet. You have all your electrical and lighting information, your loads, dimensions, giving you the area and the volume, which is where the, you can also have your tag your space tag include whether the you want the area or the volume or even some mechanical information like the like the supply airflow or the return airflow or even the exhaust airflow you could add those to your to your tag here if you wanted to another thing to notice here is that we have to be logical about how things go. For example, Rabbit didn't know, and he named this a space. This is a plumbing chase, so obviously I would like to delete that. So that would be this guy here. So I would delete it from the schedule, and it's gone. We can also divide spaces. Let's say you wanted to divide this corridor and for this, it is important that this here that says select underlay element is not X'd out. You don't want to have it like this. You want to have it like this. And you'll see the reason in a little bit. So let's say you wanted to separate this space here, right here. You would come here to space separator, right? And then simply draw a line from here to here and boom the space is separated so you would have to create a new space here right and then you would give it a name and a number so so in order to select your space separator you need to be able to you know you go tab select and you can move that space separation and the space uh, envelope changes with it. So you could align, let's say with this wall, right? And you can lock it in place in case the architect wants to make this wider, for example, this would move with it. Another thing to note is that you could change this space tag to a different tag that displays the area, for example, or the area or, or the area and the volume or the volume only, or like I mentioned before, add CFM for supply, return and exhaust or whatever you want. So you could select one of them and just select all instances visible in view or entire project and simply change to, let's say, display with area, okay? Also, uh, sometimes you don't, you wouldn't know how to activate the volume calculation. Uh, you would have to, you would have to come down here and where it says area and volume computations is where you would have area only Typically, I would like to keep it an area only because it's way faster. Um, and then you can change how you want to compute your areas, whether it's based on the wall finish or the wall center. So for now, let's keep it like this. So I would definitely keep uh, volume calculation off, especially for large projects. So this is a very, very small project. Um, I would keep that off. Uh, as far as how you assign spaces to space type, because you can you can take um, let's say this conference room here, right? 
and you would have to this is the name this is the space type so we have to go here to that table that we discussed and go to conference room maybe this one right and it's already assigned you can go one by one or you can select several of them and assign them to a space type the best way to do this is via schedule so what I would do is window tile and let's say you want these three instructions or these four instructions to go together you just go like this and then down here you're able to assign it to a certain space type in this case it could be maybe classroom lecture training and boom they're all assigned and if you enjoy this type of video make sure you like the video subscribe hit that bell so you get notifications see you in the next video